swell night for a murder. Oh, Mr. Crane keeps up. Your pool of game will be wrecked tomorrow. Looks as though we'll have to play the game in rowboat. That'll be a new experience for you, young man, paddling your own canoe. Don't be too hard on Cousin Tom, Jasper. He hasn't found himself yet. It's all right, Laura. We can't all be important people. By the way, Arthur, when are they going to make you chairman of the board? If that should happen, it won't be because I squander my time playing polo. Ah, two goals for Arthur. <laughs> when they make Arthur chairman of the board, I'll sell my stock. That's the sugar, Laura. There you go. Put it down. Do you have to spill your coffee all over me? Oh, I couldn't help it, Jasper. It was that awful thunder. I'm sure we've all been struck by lightning. Never strikes twice in the same place, Laura. Just keep your chin up and hold on to everything. Elvira! Elvira! Jasper, don't excite yourself. How many times have I... Elvira! Elvira! Confound you, hurry up! Ah. You're getting slower than a snail. Come on, come on, come on. Set it, set it down. Will you stop fussing over me? You found it, Arthur. Can't you do anything with this wife of yours? Laura, dear. Elvira! Elvira! Bring my port. My private port. Jasper, wine? Well, you know what Dr. Denham said about alcohol. What's the use of arguing with him when he's determined to dig his own grave? <laughs> it's my grave and I have to lie it. Jasper, you worry me when you talk like that. You always worry me. Darling, is there nothing I can do to please you? Yes, but... leave me alone. Take it and put it in the library. Save it there instead. I'm hurry up, hurry up. Oh, Jack, get out. <coughs> there, darling. Take that blanket off of me. Confounded, that belongs on a horse. Bringing you down here was a false alarm, Doctor. There's nothing wrong with his health. <laughs> Let me take your arm, Laura. Why do you suppose he asked us down here tonight? I can't imagine. Must be a big disappointment to you. He's not ready to kick the bucket. You look lovely in mourning. Oh, you shouldn't smoke. That's why I do it. <coughs> Don't go, Elvira. What I have to say might interest you. Of course you all know that the new state inheritance tax goes into effect tonight at midnight. Yes, I know. I thought you would. <coughs> you take quite a slice out of the fortune that you expect, dear Laura, to inherit from me, wouldn't it? That's unkind. Why, we never once thought about the money. It's you we're thinking about, Jasper. <laughs> I'm sure your solicitation, dear Laura, touches me. <laughs> but I'm not going to make you wait until I die. Before this new tax goes into effect tonight, I'm going to make you an outright to one million dollars. Jasper, darling! <laughs> Don't do that! Also! <laughs> On behalf of Laura and myself, I want to say that... Save that speech for your next board meeting. <laughs> Stop that scribbling. If I have to put up with that, you won't get anything. Don't look so sour, Elvira. There's a little gift for you, too. <laughs> Though what a woman like you is going to do with a million dollars is more than I know. What? Why, Mr. White, I don't know what to say. How yeah, rubbish. <laughs> I know what you're saying to yourself. If I'd have married that old buzzard, I'd have got it all. <laughs> well, it was worth a million to have escaped that. By the way, Elvira, are you doing anything tomorrow night? Will you shut up, Tom? All right, but while you're in such a benevolent mood, could you spare me a dime? You're a good-for-nothing scoundrel. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do with a dime if you had it? Well, I can promise I'd put it into immediate circulation. I'm sure of that. That's why I'm giving you a million. Thanks, Jasper. <laughs> what are you looking so worried about, Doc? Afraid I'm going to run out of money before I get to you? Well, I have a million for you, too. Jasper, I don't know how to thank you. <laughs> don't think I don't know why you let me win all those cribbage games. <laughs> 
Laura, stop that counting on your fingers. I still have a million left <laughs> for my other heir. Don't tell me you found Doris Waverley. If my attorney had found any trace of my granddaughter, she'd get it all. All? Every nickel of it. After what her mother did to you. She still was the only one of you worth her salt. And it took you 20 years to find that out. Yeah, that's why I would want to make it up to the girl for the unhappiness I caused her mother. Now, that is not my private stock. No? no, that's the guest mine. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> and who are you going to make happy with the other million, Jasper? <coughs> Felix. You're attending? Yes, Felix. So there won't be anything left of my estate for you to fight over. <laughs> now, may I remind you, dear, kind, loving friend, that a fool and his money are soon... <laughs> Sir, I've held on to mine for over 70 years. Yes, and now you're too old to get any fun out of it. Well, I'll get my fun watching the pack of you make idiots of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, <laughs> you always wanted to endow a clinic. Yes. Well, <laughs> now that you have the money, you'll most likely throw it away on the races. Say, now, confidentially, do you... You think I'd better get a haircut before I die? <laughs> Elvira, let the first smooth-talking promoter comes along, take it away from her. Arthur will possibly bamboozle Laura into giving it to him to lose in Wall Street. Why not? Don't do that, <laughs> And you, my boy? Oh, I'll probably get sued for a million, breach a promise, anything to amuse you, Jasper. Yeah, <laughs> after 12 o'clock tonight, it's... You want to do with as you darn please. <laughs> when Felix gets here, let me know. We'll get this thing over with right away. Say what you like about Jasper, but he has a heart of gold. The last time you discussed his heart, you said it was tobacco. Now we can have a chateau in the Riviera, clothes, motor car. Oh, we have more important use for the money. Well, it's my money, and if I want a place on the Riviera, I'm going to have it. You'll find that I have something to say about that. Oh, very well, Arthur. But at least we can plan to winter in Miami, can't we? Come to me before. I never thought you wanted me. Not until I saw Mr. Felix's advertisement in the paper. Ladies and gentlemen, my granddaughter. How do you do? Good evening. Come, child. There's so much I want to. Talk to you about it. Felix, have you got the check? Yes. I have them right here. Well, tear them up. I won't need them now. My entire fortune goes to Doris. <laughs> you know, child, this is the happiest moment I've spent in 20 years. You ever see a lot of hungry wolves waiting around to feast on the corpse? No. Well, turn around and take a look. <laughs> Looks like somebody can spoil their dinner. Ooh, you had yours? How about a nice hot cup of coffee? Mm -hmm. Elvira! Yes, Mr. White? Some hot coffee and a snack and make it snappy. Yes, yes, Mr. White. Thanks, Felix. I feel the need of one of these. Might as well take down your stocking, Laura. Santa Claus won't be here. You talk as though this were a joke. It is, only we're on the wrong end of it. 
Well, Doc, it looks as though that heart of gold turned out to be tobacco after all. Your levity isn't in good taste, Gene. Don't kid me, you needed that million. I heard you lost quite a wad on the ponies lately. <laughs> what a sucker you were, Felix, letting the girl find you. If you're reflecting on my integrity as a member of the bar, why... Ah, uh, tell it to a jury. It's not fair. What right has that girl got to come here after all these years? What right has she? Oh, oh it's just awful. The old devil would do something like this. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Laura. Laura. That's the quickest million dollars I ever lost. Well, while there's life, there's hope. Too bad she couldn't have waited until after midnight. <clears throat> yeah. Where are you going? I'm going upstairs to get acquainted with five million dollars. Felix, are you sure that this girl is Doris Waverly? There can be no question of her identity. She even had letters of her mother to prove it. I'd like to see those letters, Felix. That'll be all right with me. Suppose we go into the den. are you going to keep, Miss Waverly? I'd like to do a little entertaining myself. Run along and sell your papers, little boy. Jasper never forgave his daughter for running off with that actor. From the day he sealed up her room, it has never been opened. Must have been a temptation for you to get rid of these letters, Felix. Beg your pardon? No offense, Felix. Driving 40 miles with the girl whose safe arrival here would cost you a million dollars. I don't mind saying it would have been a temptation to me. Sounds as though you meant that. A lot of money, a million dollars, these days. You might as well know the truth. There's a telegram that came while we were at dinner. Oh, Arthur, how could you? Arthur! Whining won't help. That girl spoiled everything. Well, what are we going to do? There must be some way out. That money would have saved us. <laughs> when we get this room changed around, you won't know it. We're going to get rid of all this heavy old stuff. We're going to get things. Things that look like you. It's almost a shame to do anything to this room. It's beautiful just as it is. You like it? Like it? I love it. After some of the places I've lived in, it's paradise. It hasn't always been easy for you, has it, child? Not always. But that doesn't matter now. You could have come to me before this. Mother wouldn't come calling. Neither would I. She wouldn't have had to have crawled if she'd been willing to have left your father, but she seemed to feel that her happiness was with him. But Dad never made her very happy. Your mother wasn't happy with your father? Well, not exactly. But really, I shouldn't feel the way I do about him. After all, he was my father. She no longer told me.
want everybody in the house to hear you. Oh, no! Don't do anything foolish. Just shut your mouth. Before I shut it for you. If there's anything else you want, just ask for it. Oh, you're a dear granddad. Oh, tittlefix. I mean fiddlestick. I'm an old grouch. But who wouldn't be with a lot of mummies walking around? Thanks, Elvira. She doesn't look much like her mother, does she? I take after my father. Scat, get out! <coughs> Never mind, Elvira. She, she's always sour about something. Besides, she... She just had a great bereavement. Oh, I'm sorry. So are a lot of other folks I know. Well, they at least got a good dinner out of it. I don't understand. You would if you knew them. But is there something wrong? Or... Everything straightened itself out the moment that you walked into this house. <laughs> Nothing else can happen now. Where did you come from? Well, I, I, I tried ringing the bell, but I couldn't stay out there in the rain all night. Do you know where you are? Are you one of the whites? Well, would you hold that against me? No. Which one are you? Well, I'm the one that's no good. That's a fact. Jasper always said so. I have all the weaknesses and none of the virtues. Probably do what Jasper always said, wind up with a tin cup in my hand. <laughs> Well, you, uh, you don't look as though you were suffering. Well, you don't know the half of it. I just lost a million like that. <gasps> Poor boy. Tell me, how did it happen? A woman made a sap out of me. They're always making a sap out of me. Or trying to. That's another one of my weaknesses. I won't take advantage of you. Thanks. From now on, we whites must stick together. Just who did you say you were? Doris. I'm Jasper White's granddaughter. You're who? Doris Waverly. Well, this is going to be interesting. You have no idea. Well, I suppose you are surprised, but... Yes, uh... I am, but not nearly so surprised as Jasper is going to be. <laughs> Say, listen, by the way, when you put on your act for him, it better be a good one. I don't get you. Well, you see, I happen to know you're not Doris Waverly. I saw you in Boston last week in an act at the Regent Theater. Oh, you should have caught us in Springfield. We're about in there, too. <laughs> Here come two gentlemen who will enjoy meeting you. Dr. Denham and Mr. Felix. Gentlemen, Miss Doris Waverly. How do you do? How do you do? Is this some area of perverted sense of humor, young man? It's not my idea of a joke. I can think of funnier things than belonging to the Jasper White family. As Mr. White's attorney, you'll understand my interest in your unexpected appearance, Miss Waverly. That's okay with me. Where'd you come from? Boston. Just played a week at the region. Too bad you didn't catch the act. Do you good to relax? <laughs> An actress, eh? What uh, brought you here? The great Laval. Who? Joe Laval, my partner in the vaudeville act. We ran out of gas down the road. He won't be here any minute. And so, 
After all these years, you suddenly take it into your mind to visit your grandfather. Now you're catching on. Now, if you don't mind telling Mr. White. Oh, let me do it. I can hardly wait. Pardon me, madam. What are you made up for, Lady Macbeth? What do you want? In case you have to know, I'm seeking the whereabouts of one Doris Waverley. Who are you? Don't you know who I am? <laughs> I am the master of ledger domain. The great Laval, the world's greatest magician. Prestidigitator. Now you see it, and now you don't. <laughs> I'll be with you in a minute, babe. Say, what kind of a one-line stand is this we've walked into? Who's the brother, Ag? A couple of nice boys, Joe. They've just given me a marvelous reception. Well, always glad to meet my public. <laughs> Gentlemen, have one on me. Now you see it. Now you know. <laughs> Deaf and dumb, both of them. But I'm not hungry. Well, you better have something. Try a cup of this coffee. You better drink it while it's hot. Thanks. Come in. Excuse me, Jasper. Well, what do you want? There's a surprise package waiting for you downstairs. Wait. All right, I'll tell her. Tell who? She calls herself Doris Waverly. What do you mean? That's ridiculous. I'll be right down. Why should anyone want to impersonate me? There's a very good reason, but don't you worry about it. You wait here. Sheriff, you'd better come over here right away. Yes. Goodbye. Not only that, even Houdini used to cop my act. I suppose you're magician enough, Mr. Laval, to get yourself out of anything. You take the very words right out of my mouth. Ever try getting yourself out of jail? This is the young lady. Yeah. Well, who are you? You, I mean. This gentleman is a friend of the young woman. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Laval. Uh-uh. The great Laval. A variety magician. Vaudeville. Artist. Well, I want to speak to this young lady alone. As your attorney, Jasper, don't you think that I had better... I said alone. Get out. All of you. Jack. Go on. I said all of you. Uh, I'll be uh, standing right off stage in case you need me. You... You say that you are... my granddaughter. Well, that, that's what Mother always told me. Well, why haven't you visited me before this? Well, it's the first time our booking ever took us near Boston. Hmm. Why did you pick out this particular night to come here? If you're sorry, I wish I hadn't. I only came because Mother asked me to, before she died. Oh, this mother of yours. She thought that I would leave you my money. Your money? Why, I wouldn't touch a penny of it. I've never had to beg for a living. Then why did you come here? I don't know now. I knew what you'd be like, and that's just what you are, only more so. No wonder Mother ran away. Camaria. Don't you say a word against my father. He was the grandest man who ever lived. And, and I think you're the most hateful old thing I've ever seen. Wait. Oh, I've had enough. I shouldn't have let Joe talk me into coming here. Oh, it was his idea, eh, this Monty Bank? You needn't sneer at him. He's been everything to me my father would have been if he'd lived. And what's more, Joe's an artist. A trickster. And why should I believe any different of you? Why should I believe that you are Doris Waverly when I know the real Doris Waverly is upstairs? I don't care what she calls herself, but if she says she's Doris Waverly, it's a lie. 
Are you willing to tell her that? I'd enjoy it. Well, come on. died instantly. How? Poison. There's no doubt about it. One of the deadlier ones. She has all the usual symptoms. But why should she kill herself? Because she knew the real Doris Waverly was downstairs and decided it was the only way out. Well, if she drank poison, why is the cup in her right hand when I know she was left-handed? Well, if it wasn't suicide, why was the door locked on the inside? Nobody could come in. Your balcony joins the one to this room, Arthur. Did you or Laura hear anything? Not until I heard the scream. You needn't mind that, Elvira. <laughs> Supposing she did poison herself, she wouldn't have put poison in the coffee pot. If the analysis shows any trace of poison, it wasn't suicide. It was murder. And the person who killed her is in this room. Sheriff, you won't find any cyanide in my bag. How'd you know it was cyanide? The coroner corroborated his diagnosis. Then what's it? Castor oil. <laughs> You were lucky it wasn't you up there in that room instead of that other girl. Meaning what? Don't you know that whoever killed that girl thought she was Doris Waverly? Well, that sort of puts me on the spot, doesn't it? Every minute you spend under this roof, that clock may be ticking your life away. You're not trying to tell me it means anything to you, are you? You might be surprised if I were to tell you how much it could mean to me. I know how much it means to you. To be one million dollars richer. Why don't you do your disappearing act? That's an idea at that. Come on, we're bowing out of this show right now. Swell. I'll drive you wherever you want to go. Save your gas, buddy. That guy gets in my hair. What kind of a song and dance has he been giving you now? He's nice, Joe. Who wouldn't be with a girl waiting for $5 million to be dropped in her lap? You don't think I'm waiting for that? I'll say you're not. I've sought a lot of women in half in my time, but that dame upstairs was no fake. We're exiting. Without saying goodbye? Stick around this morgue long enough for them to say goodbye to you with flowers. Come on. So long, hotshot. Sorry I have to walk out on you. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, that's what you think. Nobody leaves this house. 
Sheriff's orders. Say, if that small town sheriff thinks he's booking us on this bill, Don't get tough, Laval. The great Laval for you. Now, look here, officer. Tell it to the sheriff. And how I'll tell him. Son, you can't keep me here. Doing it, ain't I? I told you I'd send for you when I wanted you. If anybody else is going to get carried out of this morgue, it's not going to be Doris. I'm walking around here right now. Uh, running out, eh? I said walking, constable. Never run to exit. Another crack out of you, and I'll jail you for contempt. If you do, I'll have you arrested for impersonating an officer. Now, look here, Laval. The great Laval. Listen, Jasper, you can't expect this girl to risk staying here after what's happened. It's well, such a hurry to get away now, huh? I was coming to that. This girl's not Doris Waverly. So she knows why Doris Waverly was killed. Why, you nasty little mouthpiece. I'll knock you fatter than a free sheet, Chief. Easy, you, or I'll slap the bracelets on you. Keep your cuffs in your pocket, Dr. Watson. I only do my escape act when I get paid for it. You won't get yourself out of this so easily. Still claiming you're Doris Waverly, eh? I won't be talked to like this by you or anybody else. You've got a pretty sharp tongue, young woman. And where do you suppose she gets it, you nitwit? <laughs> you her mother all over again. Come here, child. I knew that you were my granddaughter from the very moment you said I was the most hateful old thing you had ever met. I wouldn't have said that if I... I wanted to see how far you really would go. You went a little farther. I'm sorry. Well, I suppose I had it coming to me, but no one else ever had the spunk to do it before. If this is your granddaughter, then who's the other girl? An imposter brought here by someone who knew she would get my entire estate. That doesn't explain those letters that prove that she was Doris Waverly. They're very convincing, Jasper. No. Oh. They're not here. Top of my stuff, huh? Now let's see you pull them out of your hat. You saw me put them back? I was showing them to the doctor while you were upstairs. That's right. <laughs> I suppose those letters just put on their hats and coats and went out for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> they might even have been cremated. <laughs> are you sure those letters weren't forgeries, Felix? Are you... Are you accusing me? <laughs> oh, I was just thinking that someone might have tried to substitute an imposter so they could get five million instead of one. Mr. Felix, how did you meet the dead girl? I... I advertised for her, naturally. So you advertised for her? You didn't by any chance kill that girl? This is intolerable. I, who stand before you with an unsullied record, a man whose whole career exemplifies the highest ideals of his profession. Oh, don't forget to bring in Lincoln and Gettysburg. Surely, Jasper, you do not doubt my integrity. I don't trust you any more than I do Denham. No? No, you look too innocent. Dr. Denham did not look so innocent when he was alone with me. He admitted it would be a temptation to have kept that girl from arriving here. Very interesting, Mr. Felix. But it wasn't I who took that cup of poison coffee to the girl's room. Hmm, I was coming to that. What about this Elvira? I'll get her. <laughs> Your hearing can't be as good as it used to be, all right. Come in. <laughs> the rest of you can go. I'll call and I want you. Go on, get out. Get out, scat, all of you. You won't run away. I'm not afraid. And don't trust this young scoundrel too far. Don't you let her out of your sight. I won't. You're a dear. Get, stop that. Go, get her out of here. <laughs> I thought I was a magician, but she's got too much on the ball for me. What's that? Making a human being out of an old buzzard like you. you... Easy now, Pop. I'm going to solve this murder for you. Pull it out of your hat, eh? Wrong again, Oscar. That's where the little Easter bunnies come from. Okay, Elmer, it's your witness. Sit down. You needn't be afraid, if you have nothing to conceal. Oh, it's you. Give me another piece of paper, will you? 
Thank you very much. Just one. Some tobacco. I watch very closely. There you are. You see them? Yeah. <laughs> I told you the truth. I believe you, Elvira. Sure. But why did you poison the coffee? I didn't do it. Who did, then? I... I, I don't know. You took the coffee to the girl's room? You hated her, didn't you? Didn't you? Yes, yes, I hated her. Why well, shouldn't I? Oh, I knew I'd get it out of her. <laughs> you want to write your own confession? I'm not confessing anything. She can't confess to something she didn't do. Oh, protecting her, is that it, Mr. White? Oh, don't be any more of an idiot than you can help, Sheriff. Even if Elvira did poison the coffee. She never choked that girl until she was insensible and then forced that coffee down her throat to make it look like suicide. <laughs> oh, it took a man to do that. How do you know all about this? I don't. But whoever committed the murder made the mistake of placing the cup in her right hand when I know she was left-handed. You know more about this than you're telling. Elvira knows more than she's telling. Who did it? You're shielding him, Elvira. Well, why should I? Because you hated the girl. And whoever did it was accommodating you. And you're protecting him. I know. You made the mistake a moment ago when the sheriff asked you who did it, and you hesitated and thought twice before you said you didn't know. Well, that makes her an accessory after the fact. Come on, you're going with me. No, no, I'll tell you. I heard them talking in their room. Heard who? The proctors. She was excited. She told him she was afraid of something he was going to do. Then he told her to shut him out before anyone heard her. She's lying. No. A lie, you. Maybe you'd like to kill her the way you killed that other girl. I had nothing to do with it. I never left my room. What was it your wife was afraid you'd do? I never said a thing. Oh, yes, you did, Laura Proctor. You were talking there as fast as you could. You're making it up, every word of it. Have you forgotten that that room was locked from the inside? Have you forgotten that the balcony outside of your room leads to that room? Oh, you would like to pin it on me, wouldn't you? You've always hated me ever since I married into your family. That's Laura's misfortune, not mine. That's all for you. How do you think it might be? A Jews of murder, not knowing what will happen next. If I had anything to say about it, there'd be plenty happening. Threatening, eh? Arthur, dear, I told you to be careful. Oh, so he did do something that you didn't want him to do. That's all for you, Mr. Proctor. I'll talk to you later. But Mrs. Proctor is going to answer a few questions right now. You're not going to bulldoze my wife. She doesn't know any more about this than I do. Well, that ought to be plenty. Outside, Proctor. Now, you're going to make it a lot easier for yourself if you tell the truth now. You'll never make me talk. A remarkable woman. She won't talk. Just the same, I don't understand how you happen to come here on this particular night. That's what he said. But I didn't know what he meant. Are you sorry, too? What are you talking about? Grandfather. You know, he's a strange thought, isn't he? I really think he'd be a swell person if he could get to know him. Well, don't I rate any attention? You know, I'm not such a bad sort either when you get to know me. He said not to trust you too far. <laughs> now listen, Doris. Ah, that's far enough. You seem to be more afraid of me than anything else in this house. I'm not afraid. I want to take you out of here. Mm. But I promised him I'd stay. Besides, the show isn't over yet. That's just what I mean. You're in danger here, Doris. I'd never forgive myself if anything happened to you. Really? Well, there's nothing small time about the way you work. Listen, if you think this is an act I'm putting Remember on... Remember your weakness. You'll get over it in the morning. All right. If that's the way you feel about it, I won't bore you any longer. You're not afraid, are you? Well, I guess I've played tougher houses than this. Just the same, I'll be back.
Detective, you tell me. Well, it wasn't human. It wasn't any face like you ever see before. Must have been the sheriff. What are you talking about? I got in the hall just in time to see it disappear into the dining room. I followed it outside and took a shot at it, but it just kept on going. Then, then I start to look around, and there it was, that face, looking like something the devil let loose. I saw it, I tell you. It reached out to grab me, and before I could fire again, it was gone. Go away. What happened to him? Where were you when the billing fell on me? Someone evidently tried to murder Mr. Lavelle. Too bad they didn't make a good job of it. I resent that. Yeah, maybe they saw his act. Well, if you think my hands are not quicker than your eyes... I'll quiet your nerves. And don't put it in the coffee either. I resent that. Can you remember what happened? I was eating a banana, minding my own business. When I bumped into a dart sticking in the newel post. A dart? What was it doing there? I asked it, but it wouldn't talk. So I started downstairs in case it wanted to talk to you. Here it is. I, uh, uh, uh. It's gone. <laughs> Let's see you pull that one out of your hat, Mr. Laval. The, the great, great Laval. Laval. Maybe someone else in this room has a bag of tricks. <laughs> someone who took that poison dart from Mr. Lavelle to conceal the evidence of another attempted murder. How did you know it was poison? An Amazon blowgun has no other effectiveness. You'll find that blowgun was stolen from my trophy room. I didn't see it when I left Doris there. Where did you go when you left her? To my room. When I heard the shot, I ran back to the trophy room and Doris wasn't there. I'd gone into the hall. Something frightened me. It, it must have been your shadow that startled me. That dart was meant for you, Doris. But somebody muffed their cue this time, and we're not waiting for another rehearsal. Come on. You stay right here. I thought I told you not to leave her out of your sight. And just where were you during all this, Proctor? In his room. Yes. Arthur never leaves his room. I'm going outside and look around. I want everybody right here when I come back. Abner. Yes, Chief. See if that blowgun is missing from the trophy room. Find it if you have to search every room in the house. But it can't be one of them, that face. Well, go on. Don't anybody leave this room. Wait a minute, fellow Vance, I'm going with you. I don't need your help. Yeah, but if anything happens to you this time, I want a front row seat. Who lifted my gun? Try your back pocket, Sheriff. Not here. Well, isn't that funny? Well, I, uh, I... That is funny. I got a feeling something else unpleasant is going to happen to you. Not while you're alone to protect me, Sheriff. Oh, you're just in time to go with us, Dean. What's the matter? Are you afraid of the dark? Not while you're where I can keep my eye on you. Thanks, but I'm busy keeping an eye on Doris, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm worried about that, too. Now, look here, Laval. Say, listen, where were your eyes when somebody was playing with that bean blower upstairs? If you're inferring that I know anything about that... I'm not accusing that. anybody. I'm only saying that making a play for five million dollars is just another way of getting away with murder. Listen, I know why you're doing this brother act for Doris. You knew Jasper's granddaughter would come in a part of his fortune. You've had your eye on it ever since you met her. Why, you... 
Go on, scat, scat, get out, get out, get out. The hand is quicker than the eye, Mr. Laval. The great Laval. Come, Doris. There's something that you and I have got to do. <laughs> This door hasn't been unlocked in 20 years. My mother. Hmm. Took a stubborn old man a long time to realize he was wrong. You hadn't let me see the room. Like this. Mm, it's going to be as it used to be now that you're here. out of this trunk to prove that girl's identity. <laughs> How do you know they weren't forgery? Mm. They disappeared from Mr. Felix's briefcase before you saw them. That's why I made them disappear. You? Yeah, to find out if they were genuine. This pinches it. And I blamed it on your attorney. And he's possibly blaming it on Dr. Denham. They keep on accusing one another. Someone is bound to make a slip. You should change jobs with the sheriff. <laughs> but if you're the only one that has the keys to this room for all those... What's that? Yes. Looks like the broken end of a scissors. A virus? Hmm. Where are you going? I'm going to find the one piece that's missing from our puzzle. Oh, Elvira! You weren't by any chance looking for a scissors. I was passing the door when I noticed the lock had been opened. I thought... Of course you thought it hadn't been opened in 20 years. Come on, scat, 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 scat. That face. Why don't you wear a cowbell? No wonder that face of yours scared Abner. What are you doing here? Oh, right, I'll bite. What am I doing here? looking out here any further. We can't find anything. How do you know? How do I know anything? I give up, Sheriff. How do you know anything? Give me that badge. Why, I got a no... Hmm. Why did you say so? Well, Sheriff? I'll be hearing from you.
understand, dear? Yes, sir. I think I do. These belong to you. You might like to look them over for a while. I'll be back shortly. moment we met, I knew that life could never hold anything else for me. Without you, nothing would be worthwhile. Our love is something bigger than either. We can't fight against it, and I won't let him. Please, dear, no matter what your father says, we have our own lives to live, and as long as I live. to tell. I knew right from the start that he was the guilty one. Tried to murder you, didn't he? I don't know. You were after those letters, eh, Arthur? She knows what we're after. We found this. Her pin in our room. I followed you in there. I'll tell you what I was doing in Arthur's room. I found this in the wastebasket and put it together. Ever since he received that telegram at dinner, I knew he was in trouble. Give me that. No, you don't. That's my property. What can it doesn't concern any of you? No. It only warns Arthur of a shortage in his accounts, that's all. Oh, I see. <laughs> a million dollars would have covered a lot of shortage, eh, Arthur? Oh, no. You're not pinning murder on me. I thought she'd stolen my telegram. I came in here to get it back. She was over there. But before I could speak to her... The lights went out. And then I heard her scream. That face. And the next thing I knew, there was a struggle. I felt something grab at my throat. I tried to get loose. And after that, I don't remember. Doris, is this what you saw? Yes, that's it. Well, where did this come from? You're supposed to be a magician. Tell me. <laughs> In this room, you <laughs> It belongs here. Where's Tom Dean? Why, I, I... Shut up! Shut up! In here, Abner! I just found this in his golf bag. Hmm. I did like you said, Sheriff. Started in this room and went down the line till I got to his. Just got my hands on this when he walked in behind me and made a grab for me. He was locked in the closet when I found him. You and I are taking a little trip to headquarters. Abner! Give me them bracelets. Oh! Stop it! Get... Stop it! Stop it! Come in! Come in! You'd better stay in here, Miss Waverly. You might get hurt. Come along, let's go to our room. Take it easy, Sheriff. He's not in here. I got an idea. Main's down the hall. Ooh. Looks like he's a better magician than you, Laval. Could have climbed down that balcony, wise guy. Sure, I was coming to that. Abner, Dusty, go on that balcony and take a look at that other room. See what you can find. Say, Laval, are you trying to tell me my... Laval! Laval, where are you? Don't tell me your work, Hawkshaw. What are you doing in there? Not what you think, Sherlock. Say, don't you think I've got enough trouble out keeping track of you? I don't know, have you? Didn't see anything, Chief. Don't do that. 
Come on, Abner. Come on, Laval. We haven't got any time to play games. Laval. Laval. He's gone. He must have been a disappearing act, Chief. Hmm. That guy ain't no magician. Sure, you were all right. <laughs> Doris, you must believe me. If I hadn't taken you out of that room, he'd have got you to whoever he is. You must. I do, Tom. Time, Sheriff. I was in here when he dragged Miss Waverly into that panel. To save her from you. I found out about that passageway when Abner took a shot at... at Denham. I was crossing from Arthur's room over to the next balcony when I saw a figure run into the hedge and disappear. First chance I got, I followed the hedge. It led to a secret entrance into the passageway. When I found Abner in my room, I knew the blowgun had been planted there by the murder. I wanted to trap him. That's why I couldn't say anything to anybody. You planned it carefully, Denham. Those letters you stole from my daughter's trunk. You're upset, Jasper. This excitement's been too much for you. Unfortunately, Doc, I found this lying on the floor, broken where you had forced the lock on that trunk. What's that got to do with me? And I found this broken scalpel in your bag. You'll observe, sir, they fit perfectly. Your health is affecting your mind, Jasper. It hasn't affected my eyes. Can you account for your cuff button in the hand of the murdered girl? You better come clean, Denham. Why did you kill that girl? I'll tell you why. She was his accomplice, and they were after my entire fortune. But when my granddaughter appeared, Denham thought the game was up, and so did she. Dead people don't talk. That's why you wouldn't give her a chance to expose you. The first mistake you made was when you put poison in the cup to make it look like suicide. <laughs> the second was when you let me win all of those games at cribbage. <laughs> Come on, Denham. I'm taking you to headquarters. <laughs> Look here, Jasper. I examined that girl, and I didn't see any cuff button. Of course not, you nitwit. It was hanging loose in his cuff, and I just plucked it. <laughs> He's certainly having his fun, isn't he? I told you I would have some fun for my money. <laughs> Arthur, we might just as well go home. Elvira will take your bags to the car. Felix, you go with them. Arthur will need a lawyer now. As you say, Jasper. And you stop that sniveling or I won't give you the money to cover Arthur's shortage. Jasper, darling! <laughs> Don't Arthur! do that! Arthur! Elvira, I saw you take something from the doctor's bag. What was it? Pardon me. Just sold a mint. <laughs> There you are. <laughs> I had to tie him up when he ran out of that secret panel. I couldn't have him gumming things up when I was so close to Denim. Wait till I get my hands out of here. Where's that hate detective? Sheriff! Oh, Sheriff! Sheriff! Don't you want your handcuffs? I was coming to that. But try and get out of them, Hugh Denny. A great Laval bow.
Doris! We've got to break in a new act. That's what I'm doing. 